Greetings, everyone, and welcome to R. Kelly Appeal TV, where we're discussing the topics of the federal Chicago trial, which is in its third week, and the federal Brooklyn appeal, which is in its existence of being looked at by the circuit, Second Circuit Court. I'm grateful that you're here with me today. Um, I want to share, first of all, a few things today. We're going to talk about what went on in court today, and we're going to also look at a statement that I want to read to you today. This was a statement that was sent to me by a friend from Facebook that I value opinion, and um, she received it from the book. She wouldn't give it to me the name. She received this statement from the book, she calls it. So this was the excerpt. He who is not ready, whose desire has not yet evolved from the animal plane of self-gratification is not to be criticized for his apparent density. He may have selected a more difficult path of evolution then we can understand, and he may at any moment finish his journey thereon and enter upon another pathway, and we must know that his process is the best for him and is not our concern. Your problem and mine is that we do our part according to our present highest understanding thereby being true to ourselves and to those who are related to our part of life. There is no mystery in truth. Humanity is a part of God, or it could not be externalized in existence. Its goal is completeness, and according to its desire and its love for God and his pure godness, will the human cre creature know itself both relatively and uh, absolutely. It is through its desire and love for God that humanity perceives its responsibility in and with the whole divine manifestation of infinite life. So that, it was deep to me and I love deep concepts. And this right here shared a lot about how we as a society is looking at Robert right now. Um, he wasn't ready at the age that all of this started in his life. He wasn't ready to move from that animal plane of self-gratification. And, you know, many of us, even at the age, we may be 20, 30 years beyond where he was in 1994, have not moved from self-gratification and that animalistic, basic survival nature. She and I talked yesterday, me and April Showers, we had a long talk. And basically she was saying that, you know, it is about childhood trauma and people should start to really and truly emphasize and express that part of the process. Like we're leaving it out. So this is where that part, that part comes. It's not to be criticized for the apparent density, meaning what we can see relevant to why he's doing what he's doing. And we're questioning, well, why did he, why did he pay for the tapes? I mean, when he wasn't on it, if he didn't have to be, you know, or why did he choose to pay for it? He obviously was on it. So these are the statements in which we, who have no type of understanding or personal relevance to his story is trying to figure out. And the reason we're trying to figure it out is because that's something we would do if we were in his situation. <laughs> so, so I get it when people say birds of a feather flock together, they don't have to do the same thing, but they understand um, what the process is behind what it is and why he, why people choose to do. I will never understand why a person chooses to, you know, um, be attracted to minors who 
need that opportunity to grow, to need that opportunity to expand, to get to know who they are and have their own sexual experiences with someone who is less experienced just like them. But when you have that animalistic nature, we are looking at paths of evolution, how you've evolved. And this is where April was saying, he evolved from trauma. So in this journey, he's going to show the best thing that he knows, you know, an alcoholic. If you go to an alcoholic for advice, the only thing they're going to advise you to do is drink alcohol. Now, whether that's good for you or not good for you is up to you who goes through the path and goes through the process that's best for the individual and it is not our concern. So the problem that you and I have with this case is that the truth of what we represent is related to what Robert is going through. And that is not Robert's journey. That's our journey being introduced or involved in what Robert is experiencing. Some people may feel, and this came from a young lady of which I talked to from Chicago, who feels that R. Kelly is a character whose life has passed on and it will no longer be existing to us in this realm the way that he used to exist. So when there's a follow, falling off of a character, the character dies in a movie, a character passes on in you know, a book or a novel, then it is laid to rest. And I do understand where she's going with that. It could possibly be laid to rest. And Robert Sylvester Kelly is now the person who must adhere to the remnants of what R. Kelly has been said to have done during the lifetime of his character. So who pays for that truly? The character R. Kelly or the man Robert Sylvester Kelly? So it sounds, it sounds different, but I want you to just let that sink in for a little bit. Now watch out for toxic positivity. Now, you know, some sometimes positivity can be so enormous in our lives until we see it from a toxic point of view. Now, this is what I mean. Being too understanding of disrespectful behavior or constant empathizing with abusers by trying to place yourself in their shoes and look at things from their perspectives is not healing. It's an example of toxic positivity and obsession with positive thinking to the point that it becomes detrimental. So watch out for toxic positivity. We understand that Robert Sylvester Kelly was a be or R. Kelly was a beautiful singer who who held the shell, the human existence, the human body of Robert Sylvester Kelly. However, Robert Sylvester Kelly was a human man who was prone to human error, and R. Kelly was a character and a figment of what he did on stage with the blessings that was given to him. So we need to be very mindful of how we conjure the two together. And this is why we have that split between people who believe and who don't believe because the facts are the facts and the theory it could possibly be, you know? And to bring those two together means that we should figure out the fact that this is not our case, this is not our life. We do empathize and we feel sorry for what has taken place. It does not look right for those who support. And it's time for justice for those who do not support. So when we bring those concepts together, the goal is to find truth 
so that guilt won't weigh on our emotion and our mental states for life. Because if someone charges someone with something, guaranteed the truth will come up if that person is guilty or innocent over the course of their lifetime. Something is going to come forth, whether it's new evidence, whether it's a hundred young girls who either come and say that they were involved with him or a hundred young girls saying, no, he, he started my career. I'm from Africa. I'm from Kenya. I'm from wherever. And then that information gets there. Because if you even look at Kiki Palmer, she chose to believe in the story. Even though he was her mentor, she chose to believe the story of Robert that society painted for him. So she's a product of a public opinion. And in that public opinion, she now sides with her sisters, not the truth. So until we find the truth and until it all comes out, we must be observant. And this is a critical time because public opinion cases are not really truly given to us as a society. Um, and that's the very vital part. They're throwing this opportunity to us to see how we're going to do our own. And that's what I want to share with you today before we hop into the, um, what went on in court today. And, and I also want to go over before we go into the court process, I want to go over the podcast yesterday and I thank Atmos Love for coming over to the show and giving his approval of acceptance to be able to run the run the podcast because I did go on to his show and give a commentary about what was being said on the show and people loved it. They wanted to, you know, they engaged. It it was a, a very engaging conversation with my subscribers. So um, here are some statements that came from that. So basically, let me see. We're going to start. Mental Alchemist was really, really into the conversation with me. He, he was very um, connected. And I think he was very, you know, open to his opinion about what, you know, the we will call them non-supporters of Robert Sylvester Kelly um, was saying about him. And it was hard for us as supporters to face the reality of what they were saying, because I very seldom go out there and hear anything that is being said against Robert. So these were questions that were good. You know, um, Atmos's panel were very diverse very diverse. But I also felt that the panel was extremely emotional. They took it to a negative. So that's that positive toxicity I was talking about. But it was all about the passion of what people believed. So it was understood. Um, some people felt that Mr. Levi was correct, um, that if or Kelly was guilty or not, he needs to be supported by his loved ones. He has not been given a verdict yet. People are too quick to blame before knowing where it should be. And you're right, Southern Bell. That's why I can't make a logical decision about anything until I hear everything. Um, and even everything that may be out, I haven't heard. So it's going to take time for this thing to dissolve itself so that I can see the truth beyond my own eyes. Not that, you know, I'm going to be the one to see the truth. I'm just saying my truth. And so, um, yeah, I felt that Levi. Now, some people say, 
Levi is not his family member, that he has been extorting the name of Robert Sylvester Kelly um, while he was waiting, you know, for New York trial. So I'm not sure. I don't know. Um, but I do say this. A transcript is not fact. It is testimony. A transcript is not going to tell you exactly what is being revealed. It's going to tell you what the individual is saying specifically. It's a document written in space and time as it is written. Now, the jury is going to go in and take that information and decipher it. It's going to break it down. So there is no evidence. And Southern, you were absolutely right. And Mental asked the question, where is the proof? There is no proof. It's just testimony. Um, someone said, I mean, so emotional. Like he knows for a fact, fact. And that was the gentleman with the raspy voice. Mr. Raspy was very um, energy driven. And that's something you can't be when you're trying to be open for someone else's expression or opinion. Because what it is, is you already come in with the question. And then before that person can finish, what you do is you direct that person to see your point of view. That's one-sided communication. And, you know, as a political science interpreter or someone who has gone through that whole political agenda, sitting up there with an opponent, discussing a conversation is time stamped. You have two minutes to say what you need to say. So you better have good notes. You better know how to stay on track and you better be able to pull the crowd with what you're trying to say, not turn the crowd into a, a group of people that believe what you're saying. This is not propaganda agenda direction. It is just your opinion, my opinion. So as we went on, you know, Southern Bell says he really gave them too much time. Yeah, Le Levi did a lot. He became, see, and that's why I say, at what point are we responsible for becoming a victim of whatever, whether it's a conversation, whether it's a testimony, whether it's a situation or a consequence, when are we able to say, at this point, I became the victim? I allowed myself to become the victim at this point. So they gave great responses yesterday. and. um a lot of people, a lot of times, people who have been hurt by someone else blames everyone. He should have ended that conversation a while back. Now, when you say that at times people blame, you know, someone mentioned, I think Mr. Raspy mentioned in this comment, in this commentary that um, Von Jean was a vulture, culture vulture. She was a vault, a vulture trying to support a culture. Now, hmm. I don't know what the original agenda is for Bonjean, other than the fact that, you know, who is she? Where did she come from? How did she get here? And to what degree is she going to say, save R. Kelly, Robert Sylvester Kelly from this conviction or not? That's the question. So that's, again, another area of public opinion. He thinks she's a culture vulture, but some people think she's come to really support and save Robert from this fiasco that has went on. And Blue Bunny is saying, yes, this these people aren't allowing people to express who they are. And this is what happens when you have non-supporters reach supporters with no type of game rules or plans when it comes to listening to another person's point of view about him. Atmos came in, he was very okay with everything. 
And I just wanted people to know that the transcripts are not gospel truth. Um, you have people watching this video and hearing about this video. And I believe they were setting, planting the seeds, as Minnow says, planting the seeds for future growth. And um, a lot of people feel that R. Kelly should be set free from this situation. Um, being convicted in an, in an illegal way, which is to take things and use the um, concept of, of, of um, threats as a way to decipher if a person is guilty or not, that's truly critical. That's extreme. And so I just wanted to put that out there. Now, one more thing, and then I promise we're going to get right into what went on in the courtroom today. So about eight days ago, nine days ago, 11 Alive did a search stop that led to an arrest of a man who was wanted for a 1994 Atlanta cold case murder, okay? So this was a traffic stop. And the reason I'm sharing this with you is because there are certain ways that we need to conduct ourselves when we're being stopped by police, as well as in court, as R. Kelly is, is he showing us this is the way you present and respect yourself in the court of law, this is the respect measure that we give the courtroom. Um, so this guy, I'm going to let you listen to this podcast and I'm going to break some things down. So, and then right after that, I promise we're getting right into the uh, court process today. What's your what's your last name? It's the Kim. It's the Kim. Kim. Okay. Kim. All right, I'm gonna have you go and step out the vehicle for me. She's gonna come and get me. Yeah. So you're about 57 minutes away from me. I was almost at the hospital. Right, okay. So when you're stopped anywhere, life is still going on for you, but it freezes for a moment. So he expects someone to come. So he's had this stop. He expects someone to come to pick him up and they're going to go on about their merry way. Now, this normally doesn't happen during stops, but okay, maybe he knows something we don't know yet because again, like Robert's case, it hasn't been all laid out on the table yet. So he's taking off one of those um, body uh, belts that normally has like a weapon. You can hold a weapon in it or you can hold a phone, a wallet, certain things like that. So he's taking it off of his back. Your GPS, because that way I, I didn't have go, the same thing. I don't know the name of this place right we'll, here. We'll, we'll get it figured out. We'll text it to it. It's Prince right. Avenue. It's All Prince right, Avenue. So, so basically he's talking to his person on the phone saying, listen, Come on, you're about 50 minutes away from me, so come on and get me. Okay, so, and then they're giving her directions to where they are right now. So I think in his mind, he literally feels that they're just gonna, you know, um, give him a ticket and let him go. Here, here's what's gonna happen, Sakeem, okay? Um, unfortunately, I'm gonna have to place you in custody today, okay? You're gonna go down to jail. Oh no. You gotta get booked in, they're gonna take your fingerprints and picture and you'll get a bond. But because you're driving on suspended license, you gotta go down the jail. So I did not know. So he's driving under suspended license. Now Sakim says he did not know. Okay, he's an African American, about six feet tall, thin uh, body frame, um, handsome. He has dreadlocks, and he's speaking very intelligent. He's not loud. He's not, you know, aggressive in any way. So. Hmm. My theory is what we all need to know, any what we don't know can hurt us, okay? So I'm going to give some suggestions after we see how this goes down. Because what should Sakim have done to make sure that he was able to drive this vehicle? 
before he even encountered a police. That's what I want you to pay attention to. Not know. I have children. I have a sick uncle, and I run the household. No, I really don't. don't have a choice at this Put, time. Please, 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 please. So basically, now he's trying to prove his point in the conversation where he's saying, listen, I have all this responsibility. They're like, it doesn't matter because right now we can't do anything but take you into custody because we have to prove that we can let you go. You know, um, so they're in the, the police are in a position to where they have to make the decision, you know, based upon the evidence that is before them, not his life, not his, not the fact that he's a very responsible individual. That's the same thing that happened to me during the course of my stop, you know, at that restaurant, all things stopped. I didn't, couldn't tell them that I left my identification and everything at my house. I got to go pick it up. I have children at my house and my two grandsons and my daughter and my other uh, uh, adult kids there, and they're waiting on me for dinner. I could, even though that was what was really going on that day, March 23rd at 6, 10 PM, that was really going on in my official life, but I was unable to connect to it because it didn't matter. I was going for the ride to find out who I was. And what happened in that restaurant? So this guy is saying, oh, I have a sick grandmother. I have a sick aunt, my, my uncle. And, you know, I have children. I'm the only breadwinner in the whole house. Does that really matter right now? Or should we have made sure that we were able to drive or have a licensed driver in the vehicle at the time when we're stopped? What are your thoughts? So he turns his phone over to one officer and he turns around, not resisting arrest in any way, shape or form. But this is a very anxiety driven place to be in. So I can feel his energy. I can feel his, you know, fear at this point because he's about to give over his freedom. Um, his expression, but he knows that if he doesn't, it's going to be worse. You know, he, he knew that. So he did not resist. Who set the phone up on the car? They put me under arrest right now. They, I don't know. The driver must have suspended license. Suspended license. I didn't know. And, and, it's, and it's not even showing. Unfortunately, the law is different here in Georgia than it is in South Carolina. You have a suspended license. So when you have a suspended license and you can get away with it in one state, you go over county lines and they catch you. It's a whole nother situation. So what should or could Saheed had done to protect his own self, no matter where he was at? You know, freedom is never free. There is a cost and expense to everything that is vital in our daily world, you know, and this is what Robert Sylvester Kelly is understanding right now um, by giving and being loyal and, and being, you know, doing things, but doing other things, you know, because no one's perfect and we get that. And that's something that April Showers wants me to reiterate to everyone um, based upon the situation. Everyone is human. So April, I so get that. And I thank you for being open to making sure that we are responsible for the fact that everyone has their skeletons in their closet. It's just one person being focused on right now, just like Saeed is being focused on right now. Okay. Carolina, if you have a suspended license, you have to go down to the jail and get booked in. Okay, but, but sir, can you speak to my aunt? She has... Your, we're on speakerphone. She can okay, hear us right now. No, please speak to her. Yeah. Please, please speak to her. I'm the only one that... So he thinks that he can continue to say whatever he wants to say, and it's going to be okay. They're going to let him go, you know? And that's what we do a lot of times when we're in trouble we feel that we could talk our way out of it because that's what we've always been able to do. 
But there are times that are going to come in our lives that are not going to be so easily to be talked out. Just like Robert is sitting there listening to all this, not talking it out, not trying to make everything <laughs> as it should be so perfect. Let me put this on. Do not disturb. Oh, no, I can't. Because, yeah. Um, but anyway, yeah. So that's what's going on. No, please speak to her. Please, please speak to her. I'm the only one that can help with my uncle that's sick and I feel right now. He's the only one that can help in ICU right now because, you know, his uncle was there. Um, but should he have been paying attention to whether he had suspended driver's license or not, then this would not have prevented him from being able to go see his uncle, right? Sorry about that. so as they're going through they're being very respectful to this young man and uh what they do find here on this body cam that the traffic stop leads to an arrest of a man wanted for a 1994 Atlanta cold case murder. A man who'd been wanted in Atlanta for a murder for nearly 28 years was finally caught, according to the FBI. The agency said a release that Muhammad Balil Aman was captured by the uh, county sheriff's office near Athens in the course of a traffic stop. It was not clear how deputies tied him to the 94 crime during the traffic stop. He'd had an FBI reward out for his arrest since the early 2000s after allegedly shooting a man in the face with a handgun at the Oakland City Marta station in Atlanta, November 94. God, I used to ride Marta. Wow. Okay, but we don't know. We don't know. We have not done more investigation. That's not the point of the video. It's just the way the traffic stop happened. I think he was very respectful, Saeed. I think that the um, officers were just as respectful. You know, the black on um, black crime stops and, you know, everything is all racial and the tension of racism um, in the stop. Sometimes we... We have to be aware of the fact that we don't know who these police officers are stopping. And I worked for the police department at one time in the juvenile division. And when I had to face those kids in school, I I had people, kids with guns. I had kids with knives going into schools. And this was in the 80s. Well, not 80s. I'm sorry. The early 90s, 2000s. So, yeah, we... This is a weird world we're living in. Sir, I do for my entire family. Okay. Well, do you know? I'm, I don't have a choice here, man. I'm telling you. That's, I, I that's told you job. I was not going to get in my car. I swear to you, I wasn't going to get in my car. Suspended license. You're driving a car without insurance. You've got that taken care of. I've been doing it every you day. Got suspended registration. <laughs> You have to go down to the jail and get booked in. Just take your photograph. They're going to take your fingerprints. They'll give you a bond amount. And you can bond out, and then you can get on the way up to the hospital. But you can't drive. Sir, I, I so have a seat okay, for me, please. Okay, may I speak after you? Have a seat for me, please. Are you going to sit see? down, and then I'll listen to you. Okay, so what do you, what do you want to tell me? On, on everything, my aunt just had a stroke. My uncle just had a stroke two and a half weeks ago. Yeah. I'm here helping my family. 
I don't even know who can come and bond me out. I don't even know who can come and bond me out. I'm not a criminal. I'm not a crook. I'm. If you, I look how old I am. Did you get a ticket or something? I didn't get take care of. I don't. Why would they suspend your license in South Carolina? I just found out speaking to the deputy. Yeah. I just found out that maybe when we had a car that I had that got repossessed, that I didn't take my name off of it. Okay. Um, I wouldn't imagine that they'd suspend you for a repossession. But that's what I'm saying. I did. I don't. But but no no information is coming up. I won't drive. I will, I'll have my cousin. Can you slide your license in for us? You're not so basically, it's not about he won't drive now that he's gotten caught. The reality of it is that the legal law is do not drive without a license, a, a, a valid license and insurance. If I got to take and pay $100 a month every month for full coverage insurance in my state, then I feel that everybody should have to pay for it to get the freedom to drive. Um, regardless if something is suspended or not, or not driving, because if, if someone has an accident, what's going to happen is they're not going to be able to pay. My insurance is going to go up because they're going to fix my vehicle because I was doing the right thing. But yet the other person is not going to be able to pay to play. And that's a situation in America that we need to face as responsible individuals in America. What are your thoughts? I won't drive. I will, I'll have my cousin. Can you slide your lights in for us? You're not going to speak to me? No, unfortunately, I told you. I've already explained my position to you. Oh, this hurts. I don't have a choice. Sir, sir, I have... Uh, sir, okay, so the way you're sitting right now is not a good position. You're a tall guy. you got long legs. Can you slide your knees over this way and sit with your name? Hey, my name is Brian Page and I teach people how to So basically what they're doing right now is putting um he's they're going over to his car making sure that his doors are locked, his windows are up, his items are taken out of his vehicle that he needs in order to go down for booking and then they're coming back over to the vehicle to make sure that um he's okay. That little piece, that little uh, backpack that he had on him, they're bringing that over to the car as well. Okay, I'll check it right now. I'm going to come to the other side. Watch your knee. So, can you, I'm putting your headphones in your little black pouch. Y'all got to please make sure my aunt is okay. She's eight years old. She's eight years old. I see through the whole house. I shop. I do everything. I do everything. So he's just riding around with no insurance, doing everything in the house. He's not just riding one time. He's made this a habitual habit to drive without insurance, to drive without valid license, because he does everything in the household. So many of us could have been harmed by this individual because of the fact he did not follow the traffic laws. Wow. Do you need anything else out of your car? Um, just, just know that I, can you speak to my aunt? She, just, we have a speech. Uh-uh. Just, just speak to my aunt because I do everything for the house. I okay. I, I do everything. My son is there. He's only 13 years old. He doesn't not he does not know what's going on. This is this is. I don't. Can you let my cousin know wherever it is I'm going? Can you let him know where he's going? Yeah. So when you get there, you'll be able to call him. How, how can I call him? When you when they book you in, they'll give you some phone calls, so you can call him. Yeah. All right. Yes, because I, I don't. Yeah. Why? I thought she was gonna let me just let my cousin pick me up. Why did this happen? I'm I'm so sorry. People, deputy, so many people rely upon me. You do not know. You can look. You can get in and get out. All right. I 
can get in and get out? Yeah, like they'll book you in. If you have somebody that can bond you out, you have a preset bond. So you can bond out of jail. You don't have to wait to see a judge. Well, how much is that? Uh, I'm not quite sure. They'll give it to you when we get there, okay? We'll work with you. It may be more than just having to pay, have paid the insurance and getting and and paying that fine to get the valid license. You know, I mean, I do have em, em, empathy for this young man. I really and truly do. And I get the fact that he has a lot of people that he has to support. However, I also understand what the law is. And if it's good for me to have to follow, it's good for everybody to have to follow in order to have the freedom, in order to drive and to, to and from places without just the luck of, oh, I made it without hurting or harming someone. But having that support that will be able to compensate someone if there's a crash or something happens. With you, all right? We'll try to get you out as quick as possible. This is, my uncle is sick. All right, well, the quicker we get to jail, the quicker you can get out, okay? Doors are all locked all the way. This officer is not buying the story. She's not even engaging in it. She's not hyping him up. She's not making him more aggressive. She's just telling him, you know, it's not going down the way that you continue to keep speaking, trying to get us to see your way. You know, what's your thoughts? All right. Cool. What, what is it? I've never been to tell myself. Okay. All right. It'll be fine. I promise. All right. All right. We got to get you to the jail. Oh, eight five zero. Thirty-six Come on. Show me an route to the jail. We're one mile to ninety-five. Beginning miles and ready. Go ahead. Nine eight seven zero three. Nine eight seven zero three. Ten four. So that's what I wanted to have to, to share with you. Let's see if he says anything else. I don't know if we want to just go for the whole ride. Meet Fomora 11. The video. So let me see here. So she's just going for the ride. He's still talking. Good. And yeah, I think that's about it. So if you guys want to hear more about it, please go to body cam traffic stop. Leads to arrest of a man wanted for 1994 Atlanta cold case murder. So I, I just wanted to share that with you, that the important value is not about getting out of the trouble that you're in when a traffic stop happens. It's more about what do we do to certify that we can, you know, pass a, a stop. The first thing we need to do is go and get valid driver's license and registration and insurance and make sure that we have our insurance packet above our, our console in our car. So if we're ever stopped, we could just say, you know, yes, I do. I'm, I'm registered. I, and, and pay that every month. You know what I mean? Just like we eat, pay that insurance. Um, also, I think another important thing is to call, contact every year. You could do it on your birthday. I myself do it on my sobriety date. And every year I contact my 
local um, police and I asked them, because I, I know that if I haven't traveled anywhere driving and been stopped at any moment outside of my hometown, I can always call my hometown and get a warrant run on my name and or my social security number. So that way, if somebody did use my social security number or my name in the midst of finding out that this information exists, I can then go and fight for my own justice. But not ignorance is not a defense. Not knowing is not going to help me if I am stopped by local or state um, officers. So that's something that we can do. And we can also finally make sure that every year we make sure that our name is cleared on warrant list. Sometimes I even ask them, can you send me an email just stating that this call, a receipt of this call. So then that way, if something happens and I'm stopped, I can say, look, I just did my warrant check last year. And this is what has was on my record. So if anything is on it, I know I have something to fight for. So let's get right into Robert Sylvester Kelly and the situation with the court process today. What went down in, in court? I really don't think too much is going to go down today or that it has. But let's look at the let's look out here and see what's going on. Testimony to continue in third week of R. Kelly's federal trial in Chicago as government's case begins to wind down. In this courtroom sketch, the front of the courtroom is blocked off as a sexually graphic video clip is played for the jury during R. Kelly's trial in federal court August 19, 2022, in Chicago. Cheryl Cook slash AP Federal prosecutors could rest their case in chief against R. Kelly this week as the disgraced Randy B. Singer's trial moves into its second half. Before the prosecution rests, jurors are expected to hear from four more women who say Kelly sexually abused them when they were underage. The trial's first week focused on another Kelly accuser, Jane, who identified herself as the girl being sexually abused by Kelly in three separate videos from the 1990s. One of those videos became the subject of Kelly's 2008 Cook County trial, during which he was acquitted because prosecuting his associates went to great lengths to keep Jane quiet and recover other incriminating footage. Witnesses last week largely focused on those efforts. Three people testified that Kelly's team paid them to bring him videos of his homemade child pornography while he was awaiting his Cook County trial during lengthy cross-examinations, have challenged their stories as inconsistent and tried to pay Alex Kelly, 55, is charged with 13 counts of production of child pornography, conspiracy to produce child pornography, and conspiracy to obstruct justice. Also on trial are former Kelly associates Daryl McDavid and Milton June Brown, who, according to the indictment, schemed to buy back incriminating sex tapes that had been taken from Kelly's collection and hide years of alleged sexual abuse of underage girls. Jim Eisner at ChicagoTribune.com Mkripo at ChicagoTribune.com Copyright Copyright 2022, Chicago Tribune Copyright Copyright 2022, Chicago So that's what we need to know that happened today. So basically everything is just happening as it is going to play itself out. So there was not much that came out today. Um, so we'll listen to some transcripts if you guys are interested. Um, I know Atmos Love does his transcript reading. So if you want to know what's going on in the court, a little more than the normal, what we report here at R. Kelly Appeal TV, please be sure to stop over and say hello. Let him know that our Kelly Appeal TV says hi. All right, so thank you so much. It's been a wonderful time with you guys today. I pray that everybody is in good spirits. Um, as far as the journal entry, dear Robert's energy, may you continue to be victorious in just knowing that this too is going to pass. Nothing lasts always. 
And so with that, God bless you all, and we'll see you soon. As always, keep it 100, and we'll see you next time.